hey how's it going everyone in this video here you are going to find out how to do the flat long shadow effect on paint.net now just because paint.net does not have nearly as many features as photoshop does not mean you can you cannot do the long shadow effect now the long shadow effect has has gotten quite popular among graphic designers over the years why because it brings death depth of field and li and life into your images look at this image right here it brings so much more it makes the image pop so it's really nice that's why this has become quite famous among graphic designers nowadays so if you are someone who is using paint.net because it's simple to use and because it's free it definitely helps to know how to do uh, long shadows because they really bring your images to life all right now fortunately doing this on paint.net is not hard despite the lack of tools it's not hard at all the, you are you are mostly going to need three main tools to do this very important you are going to need the magic wand tool the gradient tool and the line tool right here okay so line tool gradient tool and magic wand tool very important so now let's start with a blank canvas as you can see right here I have a blank plain white canvas you can do this with any color you want so as you can see with these with these examples right here I I use brown as the background color and you know in the shadow in the shadow is a slightly uh, shadow the gradient is a slightly darker color as you can see right here and with that example too uh, you know brown and darker gradient color okay so you can do this with any color you want blue orange green you name it all right so now let's i'm going to choose a brown color and to choose colors right here you use the color tool okay and here it is i'm going to choose a brown color and you can choose from any color right here by the way from any color right here or you can type in the hex code or you can type in the rgb values okay so me in my case I know the hex code for my color 3E2723. Okay. And now to make to change the color of the whole canvas, you choose your color, choose your color, and then you click on where it says tools right here, and then you select paint bucket. Okay? Paint bucket. And of course you can always keep the canvas white if you want to. So I'm going to choose brown and here you go. Alright, now for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to do the flat, a flat long shadow of a square for the sake of simplicity to sh clearly show how to do this. Okay, I'm going to be using a square. Alright, here. So, let me draw a square. Um, now, just a little bonus. I want to draw a perfect square on paint.net. Uh, you hold the shift key, in case you don't know, to draw a perfect square. A perfect symmetric square with all sides equal. You hold the shift key uh, after selecting, after going to tools right here, of course. Go to tools and select square. And you go to shapes, uh, tools, shapes right here. And then you choose rectangle. Okay, so to create a perfectly symmetrical rectangle, a square, you hold the shift key and then you go like this. As you can see, this is a perfectly symmetrical rectangle. Okay, so you hold the shift key and click and drag. Very simple. All right, so now let's create our flat shadow. So, the flat shadow, I uh, you ideally it should be the shadow should be at a forty-five degree angle. So as you can see in these images right here, uh, you you see how this you see how these things go. Uh, how the shadow goes like this, you know. So it should be at a forty-five degree angle like this. Uh, this is the this is the angle uh, it should it should be in a forty-five degree angle. That's the angle it should be in. Um, but to now, you may, you, you may be wondering, well, I'm not a math genius, so how in the world will anyone know that the, the shadow is exactly at 45 degrees? The truth is, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. As long as your, 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 your shadow looks something like this, in this shape, looks close to it, don't worry about it. Trust me. You know, it, it, you're good to go. So now, what you want to do? You want, you want to trace your lines. You want to trace the lines uh, for the shadow. 
it's the first thing you're going to do so remember i said that you're going to need the line tool the gradient tool and the magic wand tool so now we're going to use the line tool uh, to trace the lines of the shadow to outline the shadow basically okay so now you go you're gonna go to tools to do that go to tools okay and then select line this is a line tool there you go all right so now to do this you want to make sure you are you trace you start the outline you start the line as, as close to the corner of the shape as possible so of course i want to start my line as close to the corner right here as possible uh, all right as close to the corner as possible so that's good okay all right and and then the final thing you want to do you got to make sure everything uh, is closed in so i'm going to close this right here i'm going to close this i'm going to make sure it's completely closed let me make sure it's completely closed i'm going to be closing it and it's fully closed now okay so now after using the line tool uh, to outline uh, outline your shadow, the next one, does, the next thing you want to do is use the magic wand tool to select the area, the closed area that you want to do the shadow in. So now we're going to use the magic wand tool. So go to tools right here, and then select the magic wand right here. There you go. So select the magic wand tool. So ideally, the tolerance should be set at 36%, 35, 36%. That's good, 35, 36%, okay? All right, I'll leave it right here, 35%. All right, so now after using the magic wand tool, now you're going to be using the, the gradient tool, okay? You're gonna be using the gradient tool. Select the gradient tool, okay. So now, in the gradient tool, you must have two colors, okay? You must have the color of the canvas. In my case, as you, as you saw, the color of my canvas personally is, uh, is a brown color. And then you must have the color of the shadow, like, like what color you want the shadow to be. Now, ideally, with the flat shadow effect, uh, it's a flat shadow effect so now you want to make sure that your your shadow is the same color as as the as, as the canvas but a bit darker that's the effect you want you want you can be, keep this in mind you want your shadow to be the same color as the canvas but a bit darker okay as you can see right here technically these shadows right here in these completed images they're brown but a darker brown and so it gives it that, that, that shadow effect, okay? Very important. So now let's begin. So now, so now as you know, as you know in a gradient, for example, as you know in a gradient, um, the image starts strong and it gradually fades out. It gradually fades out right here. It starts strong and then gradually fades out. So now the final the strong, the, the, the strong color uh, should be a bit darker than the, the canvas. So as you can see, the canvas of my color is 3E2723, a brown right here. What I want to do, what I want to do is go to where it says V right here, and then decrease that by three values, only three values, because if you decrease it too much, your gradient will look way too extreme. The contrast between the colors will look, will look way too extreme. This is why I said the gradient should be slightly darker than your canvas color, okay? So decreases by three values, as you can see by default on my color is 24, decreases by three values. In some cases, you may have to increase if you have a white canvas, but always by like three or four values. Keep this in mind. All right, so now this is this this is the strong color of my shadow, a slightly darker version of the canvas. As you can see, the hex code for it changed. And now I want to create the weak color. 
Now the weak color, which is the final color of the of the shadow, should be the same color, exactly the same color as the canvas. For example, right here, as you saw, the image begins strong and it gradually fades into the canvas. So at some point, the image will be the same as the canvas. The color will be the same as the canvas. So now, okay. And so right, what you do right here is you, you enter the color of your canvas. Now, in case you don't know the color of your canvas, you can always use the, the, you can always go to tools right here and uh, select and choose the color picker tool. Okay. And then here you go. It chooses, it automatically chooses the color of your canvas for you in case you don't know it, in case you have to type in some hex value. Okay. All right. So as you can see right here. I have a strong image, it's slightly darker brown, and then it's a lighter brown. And the darker brown is the main color of my shadow, and the uh, weaker brown is the color of my canvas. Very, very important. All right. So now let's begin here. Let's begin with the, with the gradient tool. Okay. So now I select the gradient tool, and then I'm going to start. Here you go. Let me zoom in some more for you. For you to see. Okay. You see these these dots right here, these two dots. I'm not sure if you can see them. You see two dots. Make sure these two dots they are lined up. They are lined up with the with the lines. They are lined up with it the angle the way they are lined up make sure they, they, they are completely parallel with it okay okay all right okay and then the first dot should be slightly slightly further away from from your from your shape all right and now the second dot very very important the second dot should not reach all the way at the end it should not reach all the way at the end right here at the edges it should reach near the edges but not not all the way at the end of the edges very important or else it will look like the uh, the gradient is cut off okay it should reach near the end but not all the way at the end okay so, so something like this is ideal all right so now to finish selecting it you press ctrl d Okay, I'm done selecting it. You press you press Control D in your keyboard. All right, so now we're going to do the final step. We are going to start using. We are going to use the line tool again. Now the line, you want to make sure that line, the color of that line, is the same color as your canvas. Okay, the same color as your canvas, ideally. And then you want to make sure you put the brush width at three makes it easier that way or four and so so now we're going to remove these lines right here to keep the shadow intact so now once I remove these lines you will see the flat shadow okay and there you go line number one gone okay now don't worry about these tiny little edges i'll show you how to clean them up afterwards don't, don't worry about these yet and this one oh, it's gonna be gone too remove okay all right as you can see it's starting to look like it's trying to look, look like a nice flat shadow effect So a bit closer so I can get this one in. And there you go. As you can see, right now, as you can see clearly, I'm starting to have a flat shadow effect. Looks nice, huh? Okay. So now remember I said I'm going to show you how to clean up these edges. Well, here you go. Now there are two tools you can use to clean this up. It's the pencil tool and the magic uh, and the and then the 
the brush tool the paint brush tool okay so the paint the pencil tool is a solid color you can do it pixel by pixel pixel by pixel square by square uh, look so I can clean, clean this up by clicking or dragging along cleaned up very simple bam 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 or for a more like smudging effect use the paintbrush tool they're both very effective for this so as you can see look I have a flat I have a flat shadow of a square uh, looks pretty nice okay looks pretty nice and of course I can write some text on it make it look really nicer I'm going to click a uh, long flat, flat shadow type shadow so now you can do other things with this you can have some fun flat sh shadow okay and as you can see uh, pretty simple uh, to create a flat shadow on paint.net uh, very simple to do and of course you can then modify this image as much as you want with all with all your tools and move this around and here you go all right so very simple uh, to do this all right and in case you don't know in case you are figuring out um, how am I moving this? Uh, what I did, I used the select tool to select an area. Oops. Uh, just to select an area, and then and then I use the I go, I go to tools right here and select move selected pixels. Okay, so I can select an area and move selected pixels. That's how you move objects, by the way. In case you don't know. And there you go. I have my flat long shadow. Now, of course. Uh, you can do this with more complex shapes too uh, of course it takes a bit more time but you can easily do it and as you can see in paint.net it's quite easy to create a flat shadow effect not that hard you can easily do it i've done it with many shapes um, it's not that hard at all you know and you can do this with a variety of shapes so don't worry about it easy to do this with paint.net so i hope you enjoyed this video uh, if you liked it if you find it useful if you have any questions uh, please leave it, leave them below in the comments so thanks for watching and subscribe for more